At this point, we have a sort of a working component. All it does is output hello, and we can see that down at the bottom here. But behind the scenes, we have got this determine next color combo function set up. We're returning some string values, and inside our update gradient function, we're actually calling that function. So it would probably be really helpful at this point to be able to validate that something's happening with regards to the color determination process. But if we try and do this using something like console log, then we're going to hit on a TypeScript linting error. So just before we return this, I'll just stick in a clog. Clog's just a little shortcut that I've got set up there, one of the uh, WebStorm live templates. So we'll just say next colors, something like that. And again, it's already telling us that we've got this no console rule in place there. So what this will do is uh, have effectively caused a compilation error. Now, for me, not having console log, it's got its pros and its cons. If you're in production, you, you probably don't want console log statements getting left in there for any reason. But during development, it's a little bit hardcore. So I'm going to jump into my tslint.json file. So I'm going to add in a new section called rules and under there I'm going to set one rule which says no console is actually turned off so that that turns it off in the linter. However, I think we're probably going to need to restart our application for this to work. Yeah, it's not it's not picking that up. So effectively we're going to have to do another yarn start. Now this should be fine, but we do need to open up the developer tools at this stage to actually see our console logs. Now it's throwing out hundreds of them. Again, is probably not what we want. During the process of development, just seeing like one every second is probably good enough. So I'm just gonna set the update gradient to only fire every second as opposed to every 10 milliseconds. That's more than enough at this stage to actually see that output. So what we've got at the moment is a bit messy. It's not TypeScript simply because we've added a, a return type on here. We've got everything under this render method. Yeah, we need to tidy this stuff up. So what I'm going to do is take these two functions, the determine next color combo and the update gradient, and I'm going to make these private class methods. So again, if you're coming from like PHP or C Sharp or Java or anything like that, this should be fairly sort of familiar territory to you. Now at this stage, I don't need the function keyword, so I'm going to get rid of that. We've still got a fair amount of errors, the slightly different errors at this stage, because we've extracted this function out from inside this render method where we've defined these constants, we've no longer got access to some of those variables. So that's not a big deal at the moment, but we'll just carry on, we'll extract this one out as well. Let's pop that underneath and re repeat the same process. So let's get rid of the function keyword and make sure that this is a private function or a private class method, I suppose. And again, we've got, this is actually, this function's never used. We've got the wrong syntax when we're trying to call our other function. We're now gonna have to use this dot. And again, we've not got access to those variables anymore. So in order to satisfy most of these problems that we can see or most of this red underlined stuff or not underlined, sorry, red colored stuff, we need to extract these variables out into somewhere that the entire class has access to. So this would be the state of our component. So if we're thinking about the state, then in React, we can actually use the state. I'm sure you're fairly aware of that if you're coming from React in any way. So I'm just gonna take a cut of all of that. Again, this render method's still not correct, but we're getting closer. And I'm gonna add in a public class method called constructor, which is gonna get given some props. And I'm just gonna paste in all of those variables to begin with. Now, immediately I'm gonna tidy this up and I'm gonna declare this state, which is gonna be an object. And rather than having these as individual variables, I'm gonna have these as properties of that object. So we'll start with colors. And I'm just gonna switch that across now to be the English spelling of colors. I'm gonna get rid of the old style syntax for the array as well. I'm just gonna replace that with the, the bracket syntax. Page, uh, sorry, WebStorm's trying to do stuff to help me, but it's not really helping me because I've kind of made all kinds of different mistakes and it's, it's struggling to figure out what on earth we're actually doing here. Okay, so if we look at the error that we're getting here, saying that constructors for derived classes must contain a super call. So what we need to do is call super and pass in props. That should satisfy it somewhat. But we're still getting this about the props having the implicit any type. Well, that's fine. We'll just make it explicitly any. Just means at this stage, we don't really care what the shape of the props would look like for this class. 
so or this component so don't really worry about that at this stage again it, typescript is in my opinion it's one of the things where you can start gradually adopting it you don't need to fully spec out all your types which on a small project is not that big of a deal anyway, but on larger projects, when you're looking at it from an adoption point of view, it's nice to just be able to say at this stage, you know what, I don't really care like that. I haven't defined that. I'm just going to say it could be anything. It could have any shape. So the any property is something that you want to try and get away from using as you use TypeScript more. But to begin with, it's quite a nice little helper. Now, because I've made this change where we've swapped from colors to colors spelled correctly, I'm going to have to just make this change across the project. So I'm going to try and do this using a find and replace. So I'm going to do color like that and color spelled properly. Just do a replace on all. Again, it's probably going to have broken a load of more stuff, but yeah, I'm, I'd rather have it spelled properly simply because I'm a bit pedantic about stuff like that. Now at this stage, I'm just going to add in the others as well into our state. So we'll do color indices next which is just going to be that array of numbers. Let's pop that in. I can get rid of that one. And again, we've got another problem, which is that we're not sorted alphabetically. So color indices, capital I comes before lowercase s. So we've got to move that up. Now again, TypeScript is, is kind of pedantic about stuff like this, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It enforces a set standard and you can override these rules by changing your linting options. I don't see the point in doing that, but you know, each to their own. So again, step zero and lastly, gradient speed. Again, we've still got tons of errors, uh, such as like, cannot find the colors. Did you mean color one and stuff like that? Well, no, we know we didn't mean that. So we've now got the fun challenge of going through each of these and setting them properly, which is in this case, now it's gonna be this state colors and this state color indices. And even when we fix that, we're still going to have another prop, uh, another problem, which is this property color indices does not exist on read only and then some empty object. And again, the same thing here. This is quite an interesting error. And the thing that's happening here is that TypeScript's going to expect us to follow a set interface for any of our React components. Now, our animated background component is a React component. We extend from react.component and therefore animated background must contractually behave as any other React component should. Now, even though we didn't add any types to our animated background class, we've still implicitly implemented an expected interface. We can see this if we follow this through, that's just command click on a Mac. We can see that for any component, we have this interface. So this interface states that we can provide objects representing our components props. This is the P, the state, the S, and also this snapshot, which can be of type any. Now, being completely truthful, I've never needed the snapshot, so I'm not the best person to ask about what that's for. I'm sure if you need it or dig into the docs for it, there's probably some situations where you need it. But again, I've been using React for about two and a half years or something. I never even knew that was a thing until I started clicking through and figuring out what the interface for this actually is. So essentially what this is saying is if we aren't more explicit, if we don't explicitly set what these should be, they're just going to default to an empty object. And so this is telling us the property colors does not exist on an empty object. That empty object is read only. We can't add stuff to it. We're saying this is the defined interface and we've said there's nothing on it. It's an empty object. And that's, that makes sense if you think about it. An empty object doesn't have the property of colors or color indices or anything like that. We've got to explicitly tell TypeScript that in this case, we expect our state object to have these properties. So in order to do that, we need to define an interface. So I'm using the convention starting my interfaces with the uppercase I. And I'm going to say I animated background state, because that's what this interface is. And we'll just work through these. We've got color indices, colors, gradient speed, and step. Gradient speed and step are going to be relatively straightforward ones. Color is going to be a tricky one. Color indices is not as tricky, but it is still a, quite a tricky one. In fact, we'll start with step because that's probably the easiest one. Step is just going to be a number. That's kind of cool, kind of easy. Gradient speed, likewise, is also going to be a number. So all we're doing here is the telling TypeScript exactly what kind of 
thing, what kind of value we expect on each of these different class properties. And what that then means is, should we step, step to A, um, if, if we actually apply this, which we'll do now. So we'll say, if we remember, just click through, the first thing is going to be our props. The second thing is going to be our state. Well, we haven't defined an interface for our props. So we'll just say any, and then our state is going to be this represented by this I animated background state. And immediately then we're saying string is not assignable to type number. So it knows straight away that we've uh, made a bit of a mistake there. Now our step should be zero. So that should get us back to a nice friendly state. And again, now it's saying that these things don't actually exist on our interface. So color indices. And so what we're, what we're expecting here is an array of numbers. So simply a number array. Now colors is where it gets tricky especially if you spell it wrong. So if you if you look at this, what we've got is an array containing subarrays where each subarray is three numbers. So you might be thinking, okay, this is going to be a number array containing a number array. Does that work? Well, no, unfortunately, it's not quite as straightforward as that. But also it's not that tricky either, so don't overthink this. Let's have a look at what we've got. We've got this individual subarrays containing three numbers. Well, we can define a type for this. So let's define our own type. And as I don't know a better name for this, I'm just gonna call this the color type. And our color type is simply an array containing a number, a number, and a number. Now I think that's technically called a triplet, as in previously we saw a tuple, and I think this one's called a triplet. Don't quote me on that, I'm just, yeah, I'm fairly sure that's what it is, but anyway. So what we now know is we have an array of color types. So simply an array of color types. And there we go, we're satisfied. We're about to do this next step in like a very long form fashion. And this is to illustrate like what ES6's destructuring can actually save you in terms of visual noise that ends up in your code. So I'll just do this as quickly as possible. That seems to be this function satisfied. And then we've also got update gradient, which got a couple of problems. So I think we've only got one gradient speed. So I'll just add this one in, there's this state gradient speed, the rest, I think we're going to be able to do these quite quickly. And we've also got colors. Okay, and this state step. Now, I know this is not going to work and this is not how you should ever update the state, but yeah, we're just working through this. Finally, we've got the update gradient. Well, we need to call that using this dot update gradient. Have we got through all our problems here? Kind of. There's a heck of a lot of repetition here with all this this state stuff. Uh, we, we could actually use a bit of deconstruction to make this a little bit tidier. So as we know, we're going to need both colors and color indices. What we could do is do colors, color indices and get them both from state. And then we should be able to, in this case, then remove this state again and just set these back to whatever they were. No, that didn't work. Where did I go wrong there? So this state dot for a start off, that should be correct. It looks also like we need step as well. So let's get step. And again, we should be able to do something similar here. Uh, might as well just take a copy of that because I'm pretty lazy when it comes to typing and paste that in. And we also want gradient speed here. And so again, anything with this state should just be able to be replaced. At least then we're back inside our, uh, our line on the side there. Now again, we've got this, this issue with step. I'm just going to comment that out for the moment because uh, yeah, get rid of that one as well because it's no longer in use because we've commented that stuff out. We, we are going to come back and tidy it up. And as I've said, it doesn't really work that way because yeah, that's not how changing the state works with React. But what have we got here? Declaration of public instance method. Okay, so next thing it's complaining about is the fact that we've got our private functions before this public one. 
or private method, should I say. We need to switch back to using the object-oriented style syntax. Let's get rid of some of these lines. And I think at this stage we actually have a satisfied linter. Yeah, let's see. So it's just saying hello, and then it's saying this determined next color combo is not a function. Well, it kind of is. This is really, uh, this is a bit of a nasty problem. So the first time you'll see hello, and then almost immediately it dies. Why is that? That's because when the uh, this function, this set, set interval is called the second time, it's lost context of what this is. So in order to fix this, we need to bind this. And that should, in fact, then solve that problem. Let's just see. It shouldn't fail the second time, yeah. So horrible, nasty problem, um, common thing in JavaScript, a bit of a, one of those things that could cost you hours, I suppose, of debugging if you're not sure why that's happening. Again, it's not really something that we're going to jump into. If you're interested in stuff like that, then the books, You Don't Know JS or You Don't Know JavaScript are fantastic at explaining that concept. So in order to wrap up, I'm just going to actually fix a couple of these problems here. So we've got the, the step and the gradient, and we're setting these incorrectly. So I'll just leave that one there for reference for the moment, and I'm going to do with this set state, where our new state is going to be step, whatever the value of step is, plus the gradient speed. Now we don't actually have the gradient speed, do we? Because I took it out there, just hop that back in, plus the gradient speed, that should be that one resolved. And again, might as well just copy that out, pop that one in here, and step is going to be step modulo one. So we can get rid of that one. Now I don't really want to be determining the next color combo from inside this private gradient function or method, I keep saying that, uh, but yeah, let's just move that. We'll pop that in here. And at least then those uh, are now decoupled somewhat. So let's see. We should be in a state where we're actually seeing some output. It doesn't really do anything of any interest still at this point, but we're, we're getting very close. So we'll carry on with this in the very next video.